Watch out! The bald spots could be coming soon, but we've got the prime solution. Hims is the one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. It's real easy to get started. And you can get started with the Hims Complete Hair Kit for just $5 today while supplies last and subject to doctor approval. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy somewhere else. Go to forhims.com slash death battle. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash death battle. Forhims.com slash death battle. Fame may be fleeting and wealth ephemeral. But true evil never dies. It just comes back with a goddamn second health bar. Ganondorf, the calamitous demon king of Princess Zelda's Hyrule. And Dracula, the everlasting vampire lord of Castlevania. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Millennia ago, in an age long past, the Demon King Demise threatened to pull the world into blood and war. Until he got his ass slapped by this pointy-eared boy in green. Undaunted by being, you know, murdered, Demise cursed the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero to be forever haunted by his wrath made flesh. That curse became Ganondorf Dragmire. Good old Dorf was born to the Gerudo tribe of the desert. Thing is, the Gerudo were all ladies, and Ganondorf was the first male born in a hundred years, which automatically made him their king. Because... reasons, I guess? Wait, wait, so he gets to be in charge and has the best odds on Tinder? That's my dream come true! Who could want more? Ganondorf could. Jealous of the neighboring kingdom of Hyrule's verdant fields, clean water, and not being a godforsaken desert, he dreamed of a better world for his people. Or, you know... Just for himself, being the reincarnation of ultimate evil means you're probably kind of a selfish douche. And surprisingly, his vile ambitions would be rewarded. Turns out, he was also preternaturally adept at magic, as befits an education from his caretakers, the witches Koume and Kotake. From them, Dorf learned to pitch balls of electricity, summon lightning, move objects with telekinesis, levitate, form barriers, and control minds. When he wishes to fight from a distance, he can create phantom horsemen or puppets of himself to battle as his proxies. Or if he wants to get personal, he can use his dark magic to enhance his physical strikes, making him a badass at all ranges. He's a master with a blade, sometimes two, and sometimes on horseback. And sometimes two swords on two horsebacks? Let's not get crazy. He was just a man, after all, though not for long. With his magical training complete, Ganondorf put his greatest skill to the test, his raw cunning. By manipulating the rulers of Hyrule and its neighboring domains, as well as a curiously familiar boy in green. Hey, what do you know? Weird coincidence. Ganondorf gained entry to an alternate dimension called the Sacred Realm. Within it lay the Triforce, a magical artifact left by the gods said to grant the wish of whomever touches it. The perfect solution to all your world conquering needs. Except once Ganondorf got his hands on those golden Doritos, two of them jumped ship. See, only someone with a perfect balance of courage, wisdom, and power can wield the complete Triforce. If someone with an imbalance between those three virtues touches it, it splits. In this case, the pieces of wisdom and courage went to Ganondorf's enemies, Princess Zelda and the hero Link. Ah, oh, that's embarrassing. But he did get to keep the Triforce of Power, because who needs the courage and wisdom shit when you can just blow stuff up? So I live. Even on its own, the Triforce of Power radically improved Ganondorf's strength and magical prowess, while also elevating him from a mere warlock to the Demon King he was always meant to be. Literally, he can turn into a big blue pig monster! The dark beast known simply as Ganon is a nearly unstoppable terror, gaining even greater strength without sacrificing any of his intellect. As a bacon wizard, he can obliterate foes with fireballs, turn invisible, teleport, summon darkness, and even distort the space around him. Despite all that power and even successfully ruling Hyrule for seven years, Ganondorf was soundly defeated and sealed within the Sacred Realm. 
There he remained, trapped outside the spaces of reality, a prisoner to the void between space and time, never to return ever, ever again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I couldn't keep a straight face. Yeah, no, he got out like the next day. So nothing holds Ganon back for long, and he's insanely tough to kill. In fact, thanks to his part of the Triforce, he's almost indestructible. While most weapons can technically harm him, it usually takes a holy weapon like the Master Sword or Light Arrows to put him down. He once survived being crushed within his own castle, which, based on its size and composition here, and accounting for the hollowed out interior, should weigh over 11,000 tons. Even better, he later withstood a different castle exploding around him. Wow, some of this guy in castles. By measuring the size of the in-game castle model and assuming violent fragmentation, we can determine it was a blast worth almost two kilotons of TNT, a yield comparable to early atomic bombs. And even though holy weapons can bypass his defenses, he still survived being stabbed in the face with the Master Sword. You know, the literal blade of evil's bane. Or like when he was impaled through the chest by one of the sages after he was supposedly sealed away. He just yanked that shit right out and murdered the best bitch that did it to him. Uh, heads up, Wiz, you ever stab me again and that's what's happening to you. Right. Well, Ganondorf isn't just tough. He's powerful enough to punch shockwaves, tear up an island, and block out the sky with his magical malice. Plus, he can keep up with Link. He's even killed him in one timeline. And this fairy boy can dodge Beemos lasers. Which are literal lasers. They move in a straight line, burn instead of exploding, and according to the game's guidebook, are called lasers. So they should move at light speed. Based on the distance Link moved relative to this beam, we can estimate his own reaction speed to be about 11% the speed of light. Too bad old Dorf Lundgren doesn't get to hold onto Hyrule for too long. Still, you can stab and seal him away all you want. This big pork bastard will always be back to bring about your crispy demise. <laughs> In the world of Castlevania, the universe is governed by two opposing forces, order and chaos. Hey, it's like you and me, Wiz. No, I mean literally. As legend goes, for God to be good, there must be an equal force of evil to create balance. An evil found in an alternate dimension called the Chaotic Realm. This is Chaos. But to keep his spot in the balance on Earth, Chaos needed to choose a Dark Lord to represent him. A Dark Messiah, if you will. As luck would have it, a perfect candidate would end up choosing him. In the 11th century, Matthias Kronkvist was the strategic mastermind behind a company of knights, alongside fellow commander and best friend, Leon Belmont. But as with most bromances, it got screwed up by a homance. Boomstick, have some tact. His wife died from a horrible illness. Was it third wheeling? I'm sorry, Wiz, but you can already tell this guy is evil because his name is Math. I mean, I know we use Math all the time to do this show, but sometimes one must embrace the darkness to see the light. Right. Anyway, Matthias' grief was so intense, he swore vengeance on God himself. To achieve his vengeance, Matthias sought the powers of God's polar opposite, chaos. So he set up an easy six-step plan. Uh, step one, pick up a red rock called the Crimson Stone. It'll be important later. Step two, force death itself to become your personal secretary. Step three, kill Luigi. Step four, convince a vampire named Walter to kill Leon's fiance, cause misery loves company. Step five, let Leon murder poor Walt and have death shove his soul into that red rock. Step six, congratulations, you are now a vampire. God kids, I hope you are paying attention. From that day forth, Matthias rejected his humanity. He became a vampire and much more. He was the Dark Lord, Dracula. There have been a lot of different versions of Dracula over the years, but this one isn't your run-of-the-mill, I want to suck your blood type. This Dracula is the avatar of chaos on Earth, the opposite to God. So like, the devil. He He's basically the devil. He didn't have much time to enjoy his new powers, though, as his former friend Leon swore revenge, a vow which would carry on throughout generations. But good luck taking down this all-new and improved vampire lord. He's got your standard vampire loadout like blood-sucking, flight, razor-sharp claws, telekinesis, and even tripping balls teleportation. 
He can also exert his influence over all living things, whether it be mind control, body possession, or absorbing the souls and abilities of fallen enemies through his power of dominance. Ugh, like Kirby! A demonic monster Kirby. Right, Kirby. Also, Dracula can shapeshift to his black heart's desire, like into a swarm of bats, a cloud of mist, and a wolf. Oh, I get it! The opposite to God, cause he's a dog just like the way Alucard is Dracula backwards! God, I should do science. He's also a master sorcerer, able to summon fireballs, meteors, and acid blood rain from the sky. Dark Inferno is a huge ball of magma that will fry anything in its path, and he can revitalize himself with another's life energy via soul steel. Then there's his most powerful attack, a localized nuke of holy magic, the demonic Megiddo! With all these powers, it's no wonder Europe trembled at his presence for centuries, though perhaps their fears were unfounded. Yeah, despite being living chaos or whatever, Dracula was sometimes a pretty chill guy. He even got himself married and had a kid. Then again, kids are also the embodiment of chaos. Sadly, the people of a nearby church grew suspect of his wife, accusing her of witchcraft. So they burned her at the stake, and Dracula swore vengeance upon the god they followed as- Wait, 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 wait! Did he just get a total repeat of his backstory? Man, this guy can't catch a break! He was even forced to battle multiple descendants of Belmont, many of whom would actually defeat him. Well, sort of. Turns out Dracula is a much tougher vampire to kill than lame old Walter. Even after losing his entire body, Dracula's soul remained tethered to chaos. Thus, he would be resurrected every 100 years. When he wants to go all out, he can draw from the power of the chaotic realm and transform into one of many awesome monsters. Like a giant demon, a giant demon bird, a giant demon head, and a giant demon head in a painting that vomits out bats. Dracula can punch hard enough to rend stone, move quick enough to catch arrows out of thin air, and even warp the fabric of reality itself. He's tough enough to survive a lightning strike, get blasted by an enormous meteor, and even get crushed under the weight of his fortress, aka THE Castlevania. By measuring the size of Castlevania on the game's official art, we know it should weigh around 2 million tons. Even then, Dracula has regenerated his body from decapitation, a mess of blood, and even full-on disintegration. So how the hell does he keep getting killed by everyone from Discount Conan to the Ghost of Weeb's past? Naturally, with the help of holy weapons, which Dracula is certainly not a fan of. Also, even when he's turned his body into some misty vape clouds, he keeps his head vulnerable. Because... video games. Or more precisely, his hubris. Dracula's blatant arrogance would lead to his ultimate downfall, allowing his enemies to sever his connection to the chaotic realm and thus end his cycle of resurrections. So instead, he was reincarnated. Into a white-haired anime boy with the power of friendship, Soma Cruz, who turned out to be just as powerful as Dracula Classic, like when he dodged beams of light or when he defeated chaos itself. Dracula's influence and power would never truly end. Even 10,000 years into the future, his bloodline continues to strike terror into the hearts of men. As long as good and evil exist... Hold up! That's his kid?! What the hell happened to him?! Ahem, no ordinary man can stand up to the incredible force that is the Dark Lord Dracula. Behold my true form and All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, all this talk of pigs and bacon has made me hungry for Blue Apron! By now, you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. Choose your meals each week, get the ingredients delivered to your doorstep, and whip up a meal using the easy-to-follow directions provided. Blue Apron offers three flexible plans, whether it be meals for two, for four, or the WW Freestyle plan. You have control over which meals you receive each week, and each delivery comes with easy-to-follow cooking instructions and all the ingredients you need. So say goodbye to those last-minute dashes to the grocery store. With Blue Apron's seasonally inspired and chef-curated recipes, you're not just making meals, you're making memories. My favorite part is feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with ease. And as a thanks to you for watching this show, we have a deal you'd be crazy to say no to. To start making delicious, brag-worthy meals at home without the hassle, try Blue Apron. 
Check out this week's menu and get $60 off at BlueApron.com slash battle. That's BlueApron.com slash battle. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Castle is lost, vampire. No man can challenge my power. <laughs> but what is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. I'm no mere man. Tricks mean nothing. Someday I can learn to drink beers as violently as Dracula drinks people. There was a lot going on here. 
Both Ganondorf and Dracula show similar reaction speeds, with only a small percent difference when compared to the speed of light. They were both brilliant schemers who have perfectly manipulated many intelligent foes, and their standard magical arsenals seem pretty comparable overall. But Dracula did have a leg up with a few extra magic powers that Ganondorf just didn't have. Like how he could rip out his soul in a bunch of different ways. That's something Ganondorf never really had to guard against before. Also, remember how Ganondorf survived an explosion worth about two kilotons of TNT? An admirable feat, to be sure, but let's look at that meteor strike Dracula survived. Based on its size, composition, and speed of ablation, it must have struck with an energy equivalent to two megatons of TNT, 1,000 times greater than Ganondorf's proven durability. But hey, I know what you're thinking. What about that sage sword Ganondorf had? Shouldn't he have had an easy time killing Drac since it's a holy weapon? In some circumstances, sure. Running this fight over and over a hundred times, Ganondorf would certainly score a few victories. But when considering Dracula's absurd regenerative abilities, it would take more than just a few hits from a holy weapon to finish him off. Not to mention, Dracula also wielded a holy weapon that took advantage of Ganondorf's weakness in the form of Demonic Megiddo. Yeah, I know it's called Demonic, so it seems weird, but it is explicitly described to be holy magic. And dropping a holy nuke on Ganondorf was a way more powerful victory move than trying to hit Dracula with a sword. And that's really what this came down to, power. Despite literally wielding the Triforce of Power, Ganondorf's potential paled in comparison to the energy Dracula drew from Chaos. Let's put this in perspective. The Triforce of Power comes from the goddess Din, who made the Earth. While we don't know the exact amount of power Din put in this piece, let's just highball it and directly compare it to her. So the energy attributed to the Triforce of Power could be compared to the size and energy of a planet. However, the Chaotic Realm is an entire universe, completely upheld by the power of the Chaos Entity. That is leagues greater than the power Ganondorf possessed. So it definitely had a lot more juice to give. Try thinking of the Chaotic Realm and the Triforce of Power as batteries, which fuel Dracula and Ganon's abilities. Compared to each other, Dracula would be drawing energy from something like a car battery, while Ganondorf's would be more akin to a small double A. Wiz, I'll give you five bucks if you lick that battery. Ganondorf certainly held his own, but Dracula's more varied magic, greater regeneration, and enormous reserves of power sealed this desert warlock's fate. Of all the ways to go, that must have sucked. The big pig's chances were slim to gan none. The winner is Dracula. Did you know we've got a card and dice dueling game? Choose your weapons, armor, and skills before diving into the fight of your life. Just don't eat the dice. They look like candy. They're not. Click the link below to get the death battle game right now.